supply chains was in the news, right? For all the wrong reasons. You see it a lot more positively and you see this like, look, people are doing things right. You know, what can we learn from them, right? Yeah. So tell me, what have you seen in the supply chain? Why don't you summarize that? Yeah, it's, it's a fair question. And it's certainly one that's quite topical, not just for, for companies, but for people, even for governments and, and nation states. We've had an unprecedented uh, 40 plus uh, year long era of globalization where companies were chasing the lowest cost sources of supply, the lowest area uh, cost areas of manufacturing in order to serve an increasingly interconnected global customer base. And that went on for quite some time and really helped take the world to, to a whole new level. But there were some looming clouds on the horizon, actually starting several years ago with things like trade barriers, trade wars, uh, companies leaving trade uh, trade unions, etc. And we started to see a, a slow resistance against what had been the global supply chain. And then the pandemic hit where the talk was, how do we make the supply chain resilient? How, how do we allow the supply chain to absorb the shock and maybe go back to normal? But the pandemic went on for quite some time. And by many measures, it's far from over. We've also seen much, much more geopolitical tension where now, instead of supply chains being looked at uh, always from the lens of low cost, we have to start to look at the supply chain from the lens of risk. What we're seeing now is a very, very different uh, supply chain paradigm, uh, which we call the risk resilient sustainable supply chain. And, and that's what I think is really, really interesting and different from those decades of globalization that we had seen uh, leading up to this. Why, why was it that way? It's a great question. I think it comes down to three things. Uh, companies operating in silos, companies being unable to process information and data the right way, and companies not fully capturing the benefits of, of the extended network beyond the four walls of, of their own business, their own supply chain. So what do I mean by connected systems and processes? Um, in, in the supply chain, the decisions you make in, in manufacturing affect your distribution and your logistics and vice versa. So for example, if you have a, a company, a, a, a customer's product that has a defect that has to be returned, uh, is that a result of a design flaw? Is that a result of a manufacturing quality issue? So these systems are connected and the more companies can, can weave that together and actually uh, uh, allow the, the supply chain to operate more end to end, I think the more effective they'll be. Um, data is an interesting one. A lot of people talk about data as being the, the real differentiator, but it has to be put in the right context and it has to be rendered when decisions are made. So for example, if, if you're faced with a, uh, a sudden shock in demand, do you know if that's expected or unexpected? Uh, it could have, that have been predicted from past information. And companies that are recognizing that this, this data is critical to weaving in and understanding risk, the better they'll do. Martin, you, I, I like, you like to look at the positives. The media likes to look at a lot of the negatives. And my view is we focus a little too much on the negatives in supply chain problems. Amazon's been delivering at an amazing pace. Apple's been working. Apple, till recently, was able to deliver millions of devices. So clearly, there are some things that have been working reasonably well, right? What can we learn from them? Yeah, no doubt. I mean, even in the midst of, of the pandemic, you know, food was arriving on the shelves, aside from the occasional, you know, running out of toilet paper and such. I think that the consumer supply chain held up pretty well. Um, and as did many other uh, dimensions of the supply chain. Uh, what we found is companies that digitalized portions of, of how they run the supply chain 
tended to fare better and do better than those companies that were relying upon more rudimentary uh, methods of solving problems, right? So let's say a company had digitalized their whole product design process. If they were faced with a raw material shortage, they could swiftly, quickly swap out that raw material for something else and have that be reflected in the design bill of material in the manufacturing bill of material. Uh, similarly, companies that had a platform where they brought together information about demand, supply, cost, capacity, labor, they could quickly uh, rebalance and come up with a plan that was adjusted based on the conditions and, and the disturbances that they were faced. Uh, companies that connected their supply chain into logistics networks could more easily find alternate sources of, of transportation. So the common theme we absolutely saw uh, during uh, the ultimate supply chain test being the pandemic were, was that the companies that had digitalized tended to uh, perform form better. And the good news is there were actually a lot of examples and companies that uh, that did that uh, quite uh, quite successfully.